Welcome to my lecture online. Have we ever reached interstellar space? Well, when it comes to people, we haven't. But we have two spacecraft that actually have reached interstellar space. These are Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. So let's talk about the first one, Voyager 1, which was launched way back in 1977. And the first things that it did was it, it reached Jupiter and Saturn, and for the first time ever, we had close-up pictures of those two giant planets. We used the gravitational assist past Jupiter and Saturn to pick up speed, or not us of course, but the spacecraft Voyager 1 picked up speed using the gravitational assist, continued on through the solar system, went past the orbits of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, Pluto being about 3 billion miles away, kept going through the copper belt, and eventually in 2012 reached a point where the solar wind pressure from the Sun was no longer able to withstand the cosmic rays and the pressure from all the space rays on the other direction and we went, the spacecraft went across the boundary and this is where interstellar space starts. That is about 11-12 billion miles away from us and notice that the solar wind essentially sets up an, a region of space around the Sun engulfing the solar system that protects us from the enormously harmful conditions, the enormously powerful cosmic rays that exist in interstellar space. At that time, the spacecraft had an enormous amount of speed, current is still moving at about 38,000 miles per hour, which is about 60,000 kilometers per hour, that's one and a half times around the world in just an hour, Continuing on, and it's now 15.1 billion miles from us, or about 24.3 billion kilometers, and still going. The temperatures at this point are near absolute zero. Very, very cold, just a few degrees above absolute zero. And how does the spacecraft keep surviving under those horrendous conditions? Cosmic rays, bitterly cold temperatures. Well, it has three what we call RTGs, or, which are radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which each produce, at the start, about 500 watts each, now down to about 315 to 300 watts each. 46 years later, still producing power, keeping the spacecraft warm enough so that the instruments can continue to work. It uses the decay of plutonium-238, which has a half-life of 877 years, and it's the alpha particles being shot out from the plutonium that produces the heat from which the electricity is generated. If the spacecraft were to keep going, and was going in the direction of the closest star to us, which is Proxima Centauri, which is about 4.2 light years from us, it would take about another 75,000 years at that, enorm at that enormous speed for Voyager 1 to reach the next nearest star. Our neighbors are not that close to us. And yes, it would be a very long, lonely voyage over a very long period of time to reach that next nearest star. 